Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chloe Ballatore. I am a relationship and communication expert. I'm a graduate of Princeton University and Pat Allen's Want Institute. Um, you might know Pat Allen. She's kind of famous in the LA, Orange County area. Um, she is um, mostly retired now, but she also mentored Patty Stanger and Marianne Williamson and a few others, um, including me. I've written three books on this work. Um, all available on Amazon. One is How to Live, Find Love, and Keep It. That's the basics of this work. My second book is New Ways of Being, The Pain of Change, and that's kind of what happens once you get into the work. And then my third book is Secrets to a Good Marriage, What is Love? Because I've been married for 20 years now. Um, Everything I'm going to teach you guys tonight, I have tried, I have vetted, um, I've worked with thousands of people, and I've done this work myself. That's how I came to this work was I saw a huge change in a neighbor. And, you know, we're really like, I witnessed all her dreams come true in the space of three years. She got married to this great guy. She got an amazing job. She went from being like a struggling single mom, completely turned her life around. And I thought, God, I want to get me some of that. And so that's what started me on this work. Um, I use the tools that I learned from Dr. Pat, who was my mentor, which her work is called Androgynous Semantic Realignment. And we'll get into what that means um, in a moment. Um, I also use tools from Eric Byrne, who created transactional analysis. And I use tools that I created myself because like I said, I've been doing this work for over a decade. All this work is based on the principles of yin and yang. Um, all of us are feminine and masculine. And it's this balance in all of us that gives rise to our consciousness. And this is not my definition of consciousness, but the definition of Carl Jung. So it's this balance between feminine and masculine energy that um, all of us have within ourselves. And some of us are a little more feminine and some of us may be a little more masculine and some of that may change. If you think of the yin and yang symbol, you know that it's flexible and fluid, right? Um, certainly as we get older, our yin and yang balance changes because we have certain drop-offs in our hormones. Okay. Now, when we are balanced, we are in the best position to succeed, right? Um, but when we are thrown out of balance, this is when we encounter problems in relationships. The best relationships, including the relationship with, that you have with yourself, are those that are balanced between these two complementary energies, okay? The feminine energy and the masculine energy, also known as the yin energy and the yang energy. Um, and it doesn't have to do necessarily with what sex you are or you were born with. I have plenty of very happy couples in my practice who are feminine men with masculine women, and that works out just fine. Um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what feminine and masculine is, yin and yang is, so I'm going to break it down briefly for you. And again, this is not necessarily my work, but what my work is based on. Okay, so all of us have a right brain. This is the center of feelings. This is the world of sensuality, spirituality, sexuality. This is passive, patient, and vulnerable energy. It's creative energy. It is very much in the world to make it fun, but it's not of the world, right? It's ethereal. 
And then we have our left brain, which is the world of thoughts and ideas. It's competitive, conquering, controlling. This is the yang or masculine energy. It's the world of ideas. Most of us are in our masculine energy when we're at work. And we live in a very masculinized world. Um, this is one reason that we failed to, ch to cherish our environment. So a lot of us are very have are very masculine at work and then those of us who are feminine energy people sometimes it takes a little finesse to drop that for our personal lives and similarly men can also be dystonic when we have childhood trauma this throws up off our authentic balance and so we women typically become more responsible or what's called precociously related at a young age and for men what makes them dystonic is neglect or spoiling or something in which men are not respected or not enabled to take on responsibility okay and so childhood trauma does this to us now Unfortunately, when we have trauma in our childhood, and most of us do have trauma, whether it's with a big T or a small T, but just simply the experience of being a child in a new home is a traumatic experience. Um, but when we have these experiences, when we're children, we have to really sacrifice at times our authenticity to, in order to attach to the people who own the refrigerator. And in doing so, we form survival conclusions which are really strategies of the moment but we think are existential truths and so that's when we get into trouble is when we take these strategies out into our adult lives and we try to use them on on other adults and often this is what ends up sabotaging our relationships because trauma shows up first in relationships Um, and if you've had a pattern in your relationships or in your life where it appears that the same thing keeps happening again, even if you've been to therapy, then this work is for you because that's what we really work on. We try to understand our childhood scripting, what our survival conclusions are, what our long held beliefs are. And then we try to investigate whether or not those beliefs are valid and are going to serve us. All this work is about helping you guys get what you want. And I know that when people are in love and have a loving partner, it's the best thing in the world. You know, nothing's better when it's working. And so that's what I'm interested in doing is helping you guys get what you want. Now, my specialty is dating and relationships. But I also help people a lot with communication. I work a lot with people on their relationship with self. I work a lot with people on their family relationships and their childhood trauma. Um, one of the things that I help people with is when we actually start making changes, it can be very scary and painful. And for example, I had a client just recently, and one of the things we're trying to work on with her is helping her relax and helping her be more in her feminine because she's just been hard driving her whole life and overachieving. And that makes has made it hard for her to find, she wants to find a masculine partner and she doesn't want to be competing with him, right? So like I said, the best relationships are those which have that complementary energy. So for her to slide into her feminine energy, she has to learn a little bit more how to relax, how to relax better and be at ease with relaxing and receiving. And, um, but the whole process of doing that is triggering her because once she starts relaxing, she gets triggered. When she starts relaxing, she gets triggered because she was taught and raised that she's only valuable for her achievements. And so it's a process of gradual and incremental desensitization that we're doing. Um, so I help people a lot with that as well. Um, I'm going to put my credentials into the chat so that you guys can reach out to me separately if you want. I work with men. I work with women. I work with children. Well, teenagers. Um, I do privates. I also teach this work a few times a year. Um, 
in module packages. So if you guys are interested in that, the link for that is here too. Um, and I put original stuff up on TikTok too um, almost every day. Okay, and Instagram and all my links are there. And you guys can just reach out and ask a question. If it's too detailed, then I'll tell you we need to set up a session or ask me at Meetup or sign up for the module. But if I can answer it quickly, I will. Okay, so now's my favorite part of the group. Now's when I take your questions. You can put your question in the chat. You can raise your hand. Um, and again, you know, it's just, it's like, what, what questions do you guys have? You know, what are things that you're wondering about or patterns that you have, um, you know, discovered or noticed about yourself or frustrations with dating? I help people a lot with profiles, um, flirting, and I also love to get your updates. So if you guys have an update, let me know, because it's always great to see the work in practice. And then when you share it, it's just that much um, of a deeper experience. Okay, Lee. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes. How's hey. it going? Well, <laughs> uh, I got an update for you about my uh, my experience this week. I wanted Yes, tell me. So Tuesday night, I went to the karaoke event and I was terribly nervous. And I, I had to bring a book with me to distract me because it's been a couple of weeks since I saw this person. And I, and I didn't want to uh, just run in the front door and go up to her and say, hey, how do you feel about right <laughs> <laughs> right okay. well, i i didn't even look at her when i walked in i went to the went to the bar and ordered a drink and got the menu and i just i didn't even look at her for about 10 minutes so cuz i'm just so scared of you know like right so you're just like taking a taking a moment take take taking a moment i didn't want to come on too strong you know or seem overly excited about it so but I, I'm thinking the whole time while I'm sitting there. And by the way, I've had a pretty crappy week with some work related things, which I'll get into in a minute, but that I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I just, how am I going to do this? When is the right moment to use these tools? When do I? So I, I said, I don't think, she, I think it's a situation of I like her more than she likes me. That's what's going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. I like her more than she likes me. Those are I, the most successful relationships, by the way. Oh, really? Yes. It's better when the man likes the woman a little bit more than the woman likes That's the man. Fast. That's interesting. Well, it wasn't terribly crowded, as it usually isn't. Mm -hmm. And so I, after I'd ordered some food and stuff, I mean, she saw me. We we saw each other. She's at the, she runs the karaoke machine. Okay. And and we saw each other. We waved at each other, just a nice, friendly wave. And then uh, a few minutes later, I, I went up to her and I said, well, how was your trip to Lake Tahoe? Which she went to Tahoe with her family. And she told me a story that she and her sister went skiing and told me, I asked, I said, water skiing? And she said, no, snow skiing. And I said, my God, in July, that's insane. Mm -hmm. It's like, anyway, we, it was nice to chat with her. And so, uh, so I, I got up and sang a song and then uh, sat down and I didn't sing very much. I just took my time. She got up and sang a song. A couple of other people sang songs. And uh, I got up after a long break. I went back up to her and I said, I, I'm going to request a song. Please don't laugh at me, but I'd like to sing the, the theme song from The Muppet Show. <laughs> And I, I said, because I've, I've had a really crappy week and I figure this will probably, this will probably cheer me up. And she says, everything okay? I said, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just work stuff, you know, just uh, some things going on related to work. And she said, are you sure you're okay? Are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay, so you fine. led with your feelings there and then she went into the mothering. I think so. Yeah. See how fast that happens? 
Yeah. And I, and I said, I said, it's just been a crappy week, but you know, singing these songs every week. But that, these- I just, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to be, you know, you guys, I know Lee, he's been coming for a while. So I'll try to be, I'm going to be a little stricter with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So you go up there. Okay. So first of all, you didn't have the confidence to say hello to her. So that was a, your first mistake. Then you went up there and you led with, I had a crappy week, which sounds like seducing with guilt. No, I, the first thing I said was, how was your trip to Lake Tahoe? Okay. You had the, how, how was your trip? But then when she I'm asked you, that. you were like, I've had a crappy week and you went into a feeling zone. I'm just bringing these things up because okay. I don't want you to shoot yourself in the foot. No, no, no. I, I okay. thought the song, the song is not typical karaoke. The mother right, 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 right. Most but you don't need to explain yourself. Well, you're a man making decisions. You want to sing that song? Go sing it. Well, I like that. I like that. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you said, uh, you know, I'm going to say, and she said, are you sure you're okay? And you said, yes. Or you said, no. What did you say? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. It's just, I just said, it's not, it's nothing big. It's just work related. Okay. So, um, but I said to her, I said, you know, singing these songs every week, it, you know, makes me smile. And, right. and then I said to her, I said, you may, and you make me smile. Okay. Good one. And it was a real sincere moment and she didn't react. She was looking at her computer. So I don't know if she heard, I don't know. If she, I don't know if she really, I don't know how, what her response was to it. She didn't say anything. Okay. But it was sincere in the moment. Like I said, singing these songs every week makes me smile. Okay. And, and, and you make me smile. I said okay. that. Which is both really nice. But again, these are feeling statements. Yes. Okay. So anyway, I sang, I sang the song and everybody loved it and laughed at it. Nice. We had a couple more. Um, at the end of the evening, um, I went to go uh, pay my uh, my my bill, and I just I was going to go to the restroom, and I just happened to notice she's headed in the same way, and we're going to meet, we're going to parallel into each other. Fantastic. The bathroom at the bathroom, and she said, "Well, are we going to close this out with another song? Do you want to be the last one to sing?" And I, and I said, "How do you feel about singing a duet with me?" Good. Nice move, Lee. Good one. She said, well, what song? What We did one a couple of weeks ago. It was so fun that we did one two weeks ago. We did the duet from If I Had a Million Dollars by the Bare Naked Ladies, that song. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know. It's a duet. And she said, I didn't know that was a duet. That was so much fun. And I said, yeah, it was great. And so um, meanwhile, she's got these piercing blue eyes. And I'm just like, I don't know. Having Something having a hard time focusing. Special. She's <laughs> right. this woman is special. Okay. Um, anyway, anyway, so I uh I said I was there's a song Olivia Newton John did in a movie called Xanadu. It's a song called Suddenly. It's a duet. And she said, Oh, I don't think I know. I've never heard that before. And so I I sang it. I sang a couple of verses from it on the spot she's like oh that sounds really beautiful I'll, I'll have to learn it I, and she said but i know a song from called suddenly seymour from little shop of horrors and i said well i don't know that one <laughs> right okay but i'll tell you what i said i'm gonna go to get let me listen to it i'll learn it let me see if i can do it you know so i, I went to the bathroom and then came back and got to the table and i walked up to her I'd found the song on YouTube and I said, is this the one? She said, yeah. And I was listening to it. She says, you can totally do that. It's in your range. And I was like, okay, great. Well, so give me a week and I'll practice. And next week when I'm here, we'll sing, we'll sing the song together. Mm -hmm. She said, yay. So, and so I, I shook her hand, just gently did a little handshake thing because she was behind the machine. She was tired. I was tired. And um, I walked to the car and she happened to be at her car and my back was turned. She said, good night, Lee, goodbye. And I said, goodbye, good to see you. And that was it. So long story short. You did not ask her out. 
but I kind of did. Right. You asked her <laughs> to meet there again next week. Yes, because she works there every week. And that's that's part of the dilemma is if I go up and ask her out on a date or for her number, the, I'm afraid the dynamic will, will change in one way or the other because I know I'm going to see her next week. So of course, it's going to change. That's what you I, want because you want to go on dates. Yeah, with her. Well, yeah, but you want her to be your time, girlfriend. This. OK, so you have said for a few weeks now that you want to ask this girl out, but you're not asking her out. And remember, we only know how much we love ourselves or anyone else by the commitments we're willing to make and keep. So you're not keeping your commitment to yourself because you're not asking her out. You are it, making baby steps and I'm going to give you credit for that. And that was a really good move with the duet. I'm just worried you're dragging it out too long. Well, I've only known her not even two months, a month and a half, two months. But don't miss your window. I know. I, I Something just didn't feel right. I don't know if it's because I hadn't you, seen her in a couple of weeks. Right, but you're going on the masculine. Down. It doesn't need to feel right, right? Okay, so what I'm telling Lee is, he wants to be in the masculine position. That means thought he gets his thoughts respected. That means he respects his own thoughts, even when he doesn't feel great about it. That means he leads with deeds. He leads with actions. He leads with ideas, not feelings. Okay. So this is still good and it's still progress. I just know you really like this girl. So I want you to pull the trigger. Well, I, I, I will. When the, okay. When, but I, let's I, see I, how the duet goes. That's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to okay. see. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun as it always is with her. She's great, but I need the right moments and I need to be comfortable with it too. Something just don't didn't be get... too precious about it. I know I'm a feeling kind of guy though. I'm a, I'm I a... know you are. And I don't want you to lose that, but just in this dating scenario, uh, I, you've had a few interactions with women that you liked where they went into feelings feelings and that's a friendship right so i just want to make sure because of the beginning sets the blueprint that you're doing your masculine stuff because we know you're a feeling sensitive guy we don't need to work on that let's just bring up your masculine side a little bit because if she's a feminine woman she's gonna be want to be with a masculine guy and if you make her if you invoke pity in her she's not going to feel chemistry for you also it was and, a it had a really weird week and i just stuff okay out, i stuff respect that you Some, just like you several, decided against it several things that sort of i didn't even sing but two or three songs and usually i get a few more in i was like i just sat there in silence most of the night i was like right because i was and i, I think, I, think I, you kind of scared I, yourself about it a little bit i, I yeah. did i i feel like i was working up building in my mind, building up this thing to be this big moment. And it didn't help my, com my confidence. Right. And so here, I was going to suggest this last week. I was going to see how it went this week. If you want right before the group, you and I can talk for 15 minutes and I'll pep you up and we'll set you up with a game plan. So you go in confident. You mean, okay. you mean my Tuesday night event? Yeah. Wow, that would be okay. You know, if you think it helps, I'll do that. It's seven o'clock on Tuesdays. That's I can find 645 or seven or whatever. I'll just, what I try to do is make, you know, you know this, I try to make myself available for my clients when they need it because otherwise, like you can see now weeks elapsed and, you know, you kind of lost your nerve. There were other factors I understand, but that's why I'm saying that. it was. And of course, once I'm in there and I'm, I'm, I'm sung a song or two, she's she's I've had a chance to say hi to her and other people and stuff. It's, you know, I'm, I'm more relaxed and I will. Right. I'm on a pass to the next person here. But thanks for this. Let me share the update. Um, I I don't think it was a terrible. Flop. No, it wasn't. It was an absolutely I, I, not. I feel like it went in a positive direction. And, with, you know, and so but it's kind of like I didn't ask her out away from the, the group. Because I know every week I'm going to see her. And if I ask her out and she says no, well, then, that's, right. then it that's, gets weird for me there. You know, and I'm going to feel, and I'm, you know, and I, it's, it's important to me to sing because I love right. to do 
it's helping me um, in many ways and fun and but um and you're a good singer and it's good for you it's a good way for you to meet women um if look, you like i can sing a, qu- a quick verse for everybody that's okay <laughs> um i just want to say that's the price tag of doing it right everything we do in life has a prize or a price tag the prize if you ask her out is potentially she says yes the price tag is potentially she says no and you're going to feel awkward at the thing so you have to acknowledge or be okay with that risk you know and then well who cares lee you'll miss a few weeks then you'll get back in there you'll meet another girl she'll regret her decision you know there's many ways it can go that's true and um yeah. You're also, still making progress. And I do want to give you credit for like, you were not in a good space and then you recovered it and asked for the duet. So that was good. Yeah. It was like, communicate, keep moving forward. Have a couple of weeks. I just didn't want to rush in the door and hit her upside the head. The first thing out of my mouth is, Hey, you want to go out? Mm-hmm. I just, I just felt right. like that would be coming on too strong. Okay. So well, right. But on. saying hi would have been okay. Yeah. Having well, eye contact would have been okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I guess I needed some distance for myself to process. So, but thanks for letting me share. I will. You are so welcome. And I, you know, I don't want to discourage you. I hope. um, You're not. You're not. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Brett. Hey, Chloe. How's it going? Hi, Brett. Good. Thanks. How can I help you? Yeah. So um, an, an update. And, and encouragement for the stuff you're laying down for all of us. And then, and then kind of that, that set stage for a little bit of a question. Um, so, um, you know, first and foremost, you've been talking often about how a lot of these techniques don't only apply to intimate relationships, right? That they apply to like friendships, our child relationships, work yes. relationships, yes. right? Right. Because there's certain dynamics of communication and energy. This works all about energy. So when you you can see it reflected in a number of places. Right. And so, uh, you know, just as an example, I've noticed uh, both in friendships and in 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 work setting recently, um, you know, because you also mentioned that that this stuff is 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 most like where it comes super important is in awkward situations, one of them being, you know, dating but uh, but in uh, you know in any potential conflict and of course mm-hmm. in work there's there's awful a lot of conflict right you know mm-hmm. whether it be super mild or whether you know anyways i've just noticed um a lot of uh, a real like kind of shift in in my ability to handle conflict doing this work that um i'm able to like modulate super well i've always been super good at being assertive i've always been super good at being collaborative but I don't think I chose my moments well. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now when like conflict starts arising, I'm sort of seem to be able to shift quite nicely. And okay, now I need to be assertive. Well, okay, now I need to dial it back and be a little collaborative. Now I need to listen. Now I need to, you know, and so it's been, um, it's been really nice that way. And and same with, uh, with, um, with friendships, you know, just, just kind of a real, a real change in that. I think the main thing that you start to see is that when you start getting that ability to modulate between the yin and yang, it really builds relationships. Yes. Yes. And that's, you know, and you know, I'm, you've gotten all of that just from this group, which is pretty great. Um, and, you know, that's why I love this work is you often see results very quickly and you start to see these dynamics and you can see them reflected in your own life and other people's lives and in, in literature, in science and reality TV. And so it's um, it's really neat when you start to see that. And that's what I mean, of how it really gives you an edge. I had a client once ask me if I was a witch because <laughs> when you see these dynamics, you can see how they're going, how certain things are going to play out. And so I had been right about a number of things. So he asked me, are you a witch? Um, And I'm not a witch for the record, but (laughs) because I know these dynamics, I know how- A witch might tell you, no, you're a witch. You just don't know it. (laughs) (laughs) But I can see how certain, certain things will play out. And when you get really good at them, and it sounds like you're already getting a little of a, of a feel for it, 
you know, then that's when you can really deploy your feminine and your masculine when it serves you the most, right? When yeah, it's and, the it, situation. And that's kind of exactly what I was alluding to, you know, that the assertive and, the, you know, potentially even like not afraid of conflict and like duking it out or blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, it, like doing that at the appropriate moment when it calls for it, um, you know, but, but scaling back and listening and being more collaborative, being empathetic, being, you know, yes. when it calls for it. And even in the space of seconds. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like, in, in, and even in group meetings, you know, and I just had a group meeting today where, you know, part of my job is to, you know, fix some problems that started three years before I got here, you know, and that's a pretty tall order, Chloe, you know, uh -huh. And, and, uh, you know, I seem to be handling it so gingerly and slowly and, but, but like, you know, just, uh, you know, inadvertently put somebody on the spot today and, and, and managed to work my way through it quite gingerly. And, and, you know, he like wrote me on teams afterwards, started chatting about, you know, my philosophy about this, that, and the other. And oh, like, oh, you converted somebody. Very good. Yeah, like, you know, that's what I kind of mean by it. it's like, um, like it, it builds relationships, you know, when you, yeah. whereas the support if you're of languaging, rigid, yeah, huh? the support of languaging, it's like the quantum mechanics of, of language is what. Yeah, meant to yeah. Be. and I think my the old school way of doing it, I just decided I made decisions about, okay, when am I strong and assertive? And when do I, you know, in what situations or with what people and it was rigid mm -hmm. and then others i'm like these types of situations and these people i have to be more collaborative and you know more empathetic and listening and and it didn't work because it was like you know you needed to be able to modulate with the situation and with the people and be flexible yes. and, and, yes. and sort of like just respond to whatever the situation called for yeah in the moment in that exact moment yes you know, and yeah anyway it really distills the communication i'm so happy to hear that do you have a question for me well yes um okay and and um you know uh, you know as i keep yammering on about it's like uh, by the way it's the year anniversary of the breakup with succubus yay well not already, yet because... already through a year already through a year yeah yeah she broke she 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 like kind of had her final freak out meltdown um two days before my birthday my birthday was july 4th so you can oh, imagine love to do that around the holidays oh yeah. borderlines are so famous yeah. for that yes what is going on with that that's not that's my just, question you know that's just a, a good time to wreck people's lives <laughs> it's around <laughs> special occasions especially yeah, yeah special occasions just yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, especially you, when they know you're going to be, you know, vulnerable or hopeful or wanting to have a good time. That's the perfect time to strike. You think that there is something purposeful and malicious, even though stuff is not conscious? Um, no, not always. You or know, is it just reactive to the pressure of the day? You know, I mean, everybody's different. You know, I, I actually don't work with borderlines. I won't work with borderlines, and I don't work with sociopaths or psychopaths uh, some borderlines there is hope for some there's not really hope for yeah um but it's a long road and yeah. um i don't know you know sometimes it's not necessarily that someone likes doing it but that they're habituated to it yep, yep. the habit like of it brings them some sort of familiarity and that has a comfort in and of itself but it's not necessarily that they're they have set patterns to and, wreck and your just, birthday right you're just you're just the next you're just the one that's there you know yeah. yeah yeah even she said it at the end she was like well it's not that i blah 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 you know you were you were just you know it's, it's what i do and you were just there right like she like yeah it's not yeah. personal right yeah which is yeah it is An to insult. me thanks honey right. you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry but it was personal to me right <laughs> um don't take it here, personal i treat everyone like crap <laughs> yeah yeah don't do you know yeah i'm just a monster no big deal well anyways um so 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 here's here's the the the, the, the question you know i i have been reticent and there's there's reasons why i can't get in a relationship but that, that, that just also that like reticence to get in a relationship and the longer that it goes on the more i like get 
just like showered with attention from women. Even just this morning, there was I was at the coffee shop taking a couple of hours. I work from home and there were these two women sitting at the table next to me and they were talking about this retreat and you know, like I just I can't help it over here. And I made a comment about like, you know, what you could get like, where are you guys going to do this retreat? Did I hear correctly? Because it was like airstreams in the middle of Ventura. And they're like, yes, this whole compound, you know, with like refab, but, you know, it's like this whole 10, 15 minute long conversation about like, you know, having this retreat center with old vintage airstreams in the middle of a city. Good. Okay. You know? Good for yeah. you. Yeah. 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 And afterwards, you know, that bed, you know, I got to keep it mentioned that the one that was sitting right next to me, but it would have been super awkward to like frame my head around and make eye contact and you know start chatting her up but like you know she was definitely a part of the conversation anyway so I'm sitting there working away and they're sitting there finishing up their chat and they're like planning session and dang it all I mean she's just this gorgeous 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 woman and she's like gets up and she leaves and be and as she leaves she like turns around and gives me the hugest smile and the most like come hither look that I've seen in quite some time. It was just yeah, like, the eye contact and the smile. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. She's yeah. one of my clients. Yeah. Something exactly, <laughs> you know, and, you know, of course, I'm just like, hi, ah, yes, I see you. I feel the same way. But, you know, I just got attacked by a succubus. <laughs> I'm kidding. But no. um, so you but, didn't so, move on it. Well, yes and that's part of the issue is i'm okay. I'm not for 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 one and i'm and it's getting more and more and more and more the attention the less i move on it um because what's you know, happening I, I told you i'm mean, still healing okay okay yeah. but yeah. it's hard to fully heal without being in the context of a relationship correct and so here's the question okay. all right yes so, God, I just lost, had the whole phrasing and now I just lost it. But it's basically, it's the translation. All right, so I'm seeing all this workplace success and friendship success, and I'm able to actually build relationships. And like, and they just build on their own once you start, you know, learning how to modulate and do, and, and, and sort of bring the right energy in the right moment. They just kind of like organically build despite, you know, whatever yeah. i mean i would say that this morning was a perfect example right it's like magic yeah yeah i clearly brought the right energy and she clearly dug it right I mean, okay you know, so what's yeah. your question <sighs> what about how does that translate into relationships too like in that you know like i it's i i know that sounds like a weird question right like almost an axiomatic question of course it does right but um, I guess I'm a little worried. Right. I don't want to, you know, I'm still a little like. Gun shy. There you go. Yes. Um, that's okay. You can still be gun shy and still try. You know what I'm saying? And still have trepidations. Because again, you're wanting to be in your masculine. So you're going to put those, you're going to say, okay, I, I see you. But even so, I'm going to try anyways and say, because I know because of your bad experience, you don't want to open up to somebody else and give somebody else a chance, but that is the only way you're going to heal. And now you've, you've had a year, you've learned a lot of stuff. You have me as a resource, so you can run shit by me. And, you know, I think there's the only thing holding you back is you your energy is already changing you're already getting good attention you know lee's having that same experience once you start changing your energy it just starts to happen right yeah. it's like it's it does feel kind of magical um so you know it's really just up to you at a certain point you know i think maybe we talked about this a couple of weeks ago but with with the gentleman who was trying to make adult friendships at a certain point, there is just a moment that needs to be pushed through. And you just kind of need to say to yourself, okay, I'm gun shy, but I'm going to try this. Cause I want to have a relationship, you know, uh, cause I want to know this girl better because I want, you know, I want to take this woman to dinner, whatever it is. Um, 
And then, the, but just by doing that, I want you guys to really put the emphasis and the reward on making that effort, regardless of what the woman says. Rejection's part of the game. We all know that. All of us have been rejected. Someone tells you they haven't been rejected, they're lying to you. Everybody's been rejected. The most handsome men in the world, the most successful men in the world have been rejected. The most beautiful women in the world have been rejected. Um, so it's just part of incrementally desensitizing, you know. Um, and look, if if you ask someone out and they say no, okay, that's it. That so they said no, you know, let move on. You know, they're not even worried about the rejection. I, you know, pretty confident. You're worried about like, being in the relationship. And I'm worried about, yeah, wrong. yeah. And you, and, and you and losing to, your mind. To, to be honest, it's taken a lot to get my life back together. And, you know, I'm trying to take this stepwise um, approach. And, you know, like, yeah, meeting new people is stressful. It is, you know, I mean, it's joy, joy giving too, but it also yes. do take on a lot of stress. And yes. so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if... Um, yeah. How about this for an intermediary? Mm -hmm. I've been pretty good at getting like these attracting female attention and like getting it's kind of flirty and developing a friendship. What about if I just keep on doing that, but like start amping up my flirtation from my end of it? And does that make sense? Like it's, um, you know, that that way I can I, I guess that 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 that's that that's one thing, but the other thing, the the, the real question is is like, you know, it. I, I just need to know, like. It's maybe, just maybe it's, have the confidence that I'm going to be able to do the same thing in a relationship that's happening in work. Yes. Does that make sense? Like, of I'm going to be. Of course, of course, and ironically, taking these actions is are going to build your confidence. Yeah. The more that you can take an action based on something that you genuinely want without knowing the outcome, that's the power position. That's how you build confidence. That's really respecting your thoughts. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We can't control outcomes, right? We don't control other people, really. But if you can take a step and you and you respect your thoughts enough, which means acknowledging what your thought is, which is I like this person, and then taking an action on it. That's what's really a game changer for you in terms of self esteem and confidence. And, and I guess the other yeah, the, the the second corollary to it is if I start noticing that their energy is off, I'm going to be able to see it a lot quicker. You really will. And I'll say, cause that, that's the real issue with confidence is I don't want to like, yeah, I mean, she tore me up from the inside out cause I let her in, you know? Um, right. And but so you, it's like, but you're not giving yourself enough credit because you learned a lot. And of course, when we fall in love and especially when we have sex, you know, you do get blinded, you do get crazy for other people. And it's going to just take practice noticing red flags or or things that aren't red flags because when you've been traumatized what tends to happen is you overreact to little things and then you underreact to the bigger red flags right now you're learning about balance in this stuff you do have this group right to come to come to and you are developing your own autonomy a bit more right because that's what the whole act of respecting your thoughts and cherishing your feelings is about it's about everything coming from you it's about you deciding things it's you as your authentic self not trying to please somebody but doing something that you want taking an action to get something that you want and so connecting to that authentic self and doing those actions it's just a matter of practice really i know it feels really uncomfortable and this is part of the pain of change because even changes for the better feel uncomfortable because 
the brain rewires itself on pain. And so I often have clients who start with me and they have a, like similar to you, they have a ton of great results right away. Cause once you start seeing this stuff, it's, it's, you know, it snowballs and you can see a lot of examples, right. And you start being able to see how these dynamics work and how you can adjust just everything you've been describing, but it's meant also to provoke a catharsis. And so now you're getting into the weeds a little bit. This is what's supposed to be happening for you. Well, what do you mean getting into the weeds? Because you're going deeper now. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. And so yeah. your catharsis is starting to happen. because It's starting to happen for both you and Lee. I mean, Lee's, I know, had, had some catharsis already. And it, they just keep going if you stick with this work. So. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, you know, it's um, I think the reason I'm even raising this question is this smile I got today and the look that she gave me. And I gave you a lot of hope. So are you going to go back to that? that. It, was, it was it's, sorry to sorry to. But it wasn't it, like I've, I've had no lack of attention this this past, you know, like really just almost too much. I'm not going to say too much. You can never get too much attention, but like no lack of attention. And no lack of like, you know, oh, wow, people seem to be vibing on me and responding to me better and better and better. But it was as today was the first time I truly kicked myself because before Succubus, I would have gotten up, would have followed her out and said, hey, what's your name? Yeah. And so don't, you know, don't, that was one experience that you had. This was the first time, though, that I like really regretted, like sitting right. on my butt. Well, still. good. Remember I, that. So I, I did smile. I returned time. the smile and I gave her the big hello and the, you know, like, yep, I see you. Yep, you are fine. You know, but. <laughs> right. So don't let that opportunity go again. Go back to that restaurant. Try to find her again. And right. remember what you're thinking and feeling now. And don't, don't that's like the I think time. that's the worst feeling. When, you know, when somebody can... gives you an opportunity yeah. on a silver platter. <laughs> well, I think it's it's almost awesome. beat you over the head with the silver platter. <laughs> right, because you don't want her to make the first move. If she makes the first move, if she does any more than that, then you're going to be in the feminine energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to have to respect her. So, you know, I mean, I think it, you know, I think it's just we always feel the worst when we desert ourselves. And so you had in a moment of awareness where you knew you wanted to go and talk to her and get her number and you didn't do it. And that's why you're so mad. You know, it's one thing for, for somebody to cut you off in traffic, but if like, you know, or, or, but if you played a role in it, it's like, then you feel like a lot worse, right? If you made yeah, somebody who loves chocolate cake, and then you, somebody brings an opportunity to eat the most best chocolate cake and you're like, nah, for, right. for whatever. So, right. So that's like a small. You know, and then afterwards you're like, dang it, that was some good cake. Yeah. You so know? that was just a small, you know, moment where you sabotaged yourself. And, you know, look, it's going to happen. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just try to remember for next time, you know what? It's worth it for me to take that chance because I had this one bad experience with a woman, but that doesn't mean that all women are like that. No, the, the borderlines are only three to 5%. And, right. So, and something I do also have to remind myself is that I had actually dated people with the, looking back on it, people with those tendencies before two times before I've been in really great relationships and, and that, but, and, and not so great ones, but you know, the two times, like I was able to see within weeks and get them out of my life quite quickly. You know, it's only in hindsight that I'm like, oh, crap, that's what my life would have been like had I gotten in deep and the combination of the pandemic and some other stuff that right, really, really like it was stuff beyond the pandemic shit that hit the fan of my life that made me a little bit like blind, you know, or or right. I, I guess I can even say I needed somebody and she was of there. Of course. And we're st you know? everybody's still suffering from that. That was no small thing. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I should just have the confidence too that one got past the goalie. Right. So these borderlines are three to five percent of the population. I already had met two when the go I, I stopped them. The goalie stopped them. This one got through. Doesn't mean that. Yeah, look, but that was before you met me and before you started doing this work. I'm telling you, this work is a game changer and you're already seeing it. 
So, you know, hopefully that will, you know, it, look, we're not going to get rid of all pain. We're not going to get rid of all vulnerability. That's not going to happen. But these tools do help mitigate it so that you end up saving yourself a lot of time and energy because you can see certain things in the communication and in the behavior if the, the deeds and the words line up, for example, right? So just keep coming, keep sticking with it keeps, you know, you're being great about being aware of your thoughts and feelings. Um, and, you know, it's okay to make a couple of mistakes. That's what learning is. A lot of it's trial and error. What understanding what these phrases mean. I mean, it's taken me a long time to understand what it means to respect my own thoughts and cherish my own feelings. And it's hard. Sometimes you can have conflicting thoughts and feelings, and then you don't really know, you know, which one to cherish. So does that help? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, like I'm almost at, to translate everything, time to go to the next level, time to go to the next step, I guess. Yes, it is. You're chomping at the bit already, you and Lee. You guys are both chomping at the bit. <laughs> <laughs> she was really nice. Okay, go back there. There's more. Yeah, I it probably I'm, I don't hold any illusions that I'm ever going to see her again or whatever. Oh, please. But it, it was just a moment. And the, my point is, is that there's going to be another moment tomorrow or two yes. days from now or three moments with somebody else like that. It's yes. like it's like a waterfall lately. So I'm not I'm not tripped out about, you know. OK. Yeah, and that's particular. part of this work is seizing that magic of the moment. And exactly. Be, you know, and by cultivating your awareness, you're you're in a better position to do that. I just don't want to be that dude who's getting all this attention and is just still sitting on his hands because so don't it's in your I, 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 yeah 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 i agree i agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know yes i agree okay okay i look forward to your update <laughs> nice <laughs> okay okay wendy hi Hi, Wendy. How can I help you? Yeah. Um, so I dated a more masculine man, which was my goal. And it didn't work out, but I feel really good about trying and wanted to ask some questions about it. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, shoot. Yeah. So we had three dates and that was the end of it. Um, so he was really, um, I mean, it just wasn't the right match because kind of three different things like my limitations of my physical illness and that's fine that's totally fine if you know he needs someone who can keep up with him more uh -huh. um and um yeah but he seemed really like daunted by it and I haven't had this kind of experience before and um in case I encounter this again I really I'm not sure how to handle it when they don't play by the rules that you think that <laughs> and then women do like um he didn't ask me out and so finally I said um you know it, is it because you don't know what I can do and or how I'm feeling he said yeah partially but then it came out he said um you know I'm also I'm afraid that if I recommend something that you're gonna say you can't do it you know like you're gonna right. use your illness as a reason and I, so that, I mean, it kind of hurt to hear that, but I said, oh, well, you know, it's really important to me to have very high integrity and I, I never use my illness as an excuse. And okay, we good. What I thought was like a really good conversation. Yeah. He um, wanted to go camping after the second get together. And I said, well, it's a little soon for me and I, I probably can't do that, you know, with my condition right yet. But um so I offered an alternative. I said, you know, I can go to this place, this um, place in nature. It's a dam. And it was maybe like a third of a mile walk. It's really beautiful there. And he said, yeah, we could definitely do that. So I thought he was going to ask me for, you know, the next day. And he didn't, and he didn't, and he didn't. And so I, I um, chatted with him and said, you know, what's, what's, you know, what's going on? And he said, well, I'm just afraid that, you know, again, I, it was the same thing, basically. And um, he also said, you know, also, he said, well, you know, you don't work. So I thought you have the time to ask. And I said, so you're waiting for me? So that's not sounding very masculine. What made you think he was a masculine guy? Well, in other ways, he is. I mean, he knows exactly what he wants. He's, he's actually very smart and he seems very kind. 
Um, but he doesn't talk about feelings, really. I mean, he talks okay. about things. But he did say he was afraid. Right, but I, I don't understand. I don't get quite what he's afraid of. It didn't right. make sense. Yeah, I mean, you know, not everything's going to be a match. Some people are going to be, you know, are going to have a bad reaction, right? Or going to not want, are going to be afraid or whatever, not want to deal with, um, you know, it's kind of ridiculous because everybody is a fixer. Nobody is perfect, but, um, you know, he certainly has the right to think and do whatever he wants. Um, what's your question? Cause this guy does seem a little cowardly in that sense not that masculine um yeah i mean it seems he doesn't seem vulnerable yeah but at this he's so masculine it threw me off i'm like what i I really didn't get what he was afraid right but in this instance i mean if he's being straight with you he's being ruled by a fear right maybe he thinks it's just not compatible or whatever but that's not what he said he said he's afraid so right. you know there's nothing you can do i mean there's nothing you can't argue with a feeling people either have feelings or they don't have them you know right um so you know i guess he made his decision his loss yeah um we actually did go to to that dam and it, it just didn't work out well he has a really different communication style like he comes on really strong you know i told him my elderly mother wasn't doing well and he's like Oh, you should, you should go up there and live with her and take care of her. I mean, who else? Oh, right, right. (laughs) No. And I said, oh, that wouldn't really work out. And he just said, oh yeah, you should, you really should, you know, that. Right. So then in that sense, he was non-cherishing. He wasn't really hearing you that, that, you know, that that isn't going to be good for you. Uh, I didn't even think of that. I was thinking he's being masculine. No, he, I mean, he's being bullying, right? There's three ways to communicate bullying with intimidation or fear seducing with guilt or tears or negotiating with love if he was saying well what do you you know how do you feel about going to live with her it sounds like that that'd be the best idea and you said oh no i don't feel good about that we don't get along well or whatever you said right right then and he went oh okay i get it but he didn't do that no he, didn't. he kept insisting on his own point of view that's yeah. bullying he doesn't he care what you have to say Later, we talked about um, an earlier thing like that. And he said, no, no, it was just a suggestion. It wasn't that I'm insisting, but it's not a match for me. It's too strong. Right. His, his um, communication skills aren't there. Yeah. They're not there. What do you mean? It's just a suggestion. You didn't, at, he didn't, inqu- there's no supportive languaging. He didn't inquire about you. People don't always have to know this work to do that, by the way. Uh-huh. It helps if they do, but. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he well, wasn't really that masculine. He yeah. sounds kind of like a beta. Um, you know, where he was just sort of on one note the whole time. Okay. Well, it sounds like I did all I could in this situation. Another time when we have more time, I want to ask you how to handle, because um, I'm wearing a mask, not all the time, not out in nature, but um that didn't work for him either and that's fine you know but right. I let him know that would happen you know until I knew I wanted to have more of a relationship with him right and um yeah I want to know maybe how to handle that a little better but we can talk another time okay okay well good job I mean it's not, I mean I'm proud of you you went on the three dates and that was good you entertained the idea you had conversations you got to know him and you didn't feel good about what you were hearing yeah so uh, it's a win yeah. Next. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up here now because it's seven and I usually do an hour. So um, you guys can shoot me more questions offline. We can set up a session or we can wait till next week. Um, if you want more information, sign up and want to sign, really like get it. A deeper introduction to this work, sign up for one of the packages. It's a small group. And we really do have a unique opportunity to hear the theory and then directly apply it to our lives, which is really nice. Um, So if you want to do that, please do so. Uh, Check out the books. And then, of course, um, this will be the session will be available as a podcast 
wherever you get your podcasts and also on YouTube. So um, if I don't hear from you um, before then, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for coming.